Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Anstey in Dorset. It's about 10 miles west of Blandford Forum and 12 miles north of Dorchester. It actually consists of four settlements. There's Higher Anstey, Lower Anstey, Anstey Cross and Pleck or Little Anstey. And we're going to be walking a roughly three and a half mile circular route, starting in the village and then following the course of the Devil's Brook to a place called Bingham's Melcombe. We'll check out a, a little church before heading north across a downland valley to another pretty village at Hilton for some more exploring before returning back to Anstey. Now I'm filming in the middle of August. Well, the sun is up there, but there is a lot of cloud about, but fingers crossed it's going to be dry. Should be perfect conditions for walking to come along with us. And we'll start off with a little look through the village. Quite a lot of history attached to it, so um, bear with me uh, while I go through that with you early on in the video. Well, we'll start our walk at Lower Anstey, and in particular the Fox Inn, which is in front of me here, because, well, it forms a very important part of the history of the area. It was built over 250 years ago as the home of Charles Hall, and it was then called Broadclose. His father, William Hall, managed a brewery in nearby Jewlish until 1782. Now Charles, who was born in 1751, decided to build his own brewery here in Anstey in 1777, and we'll have a look at where that was shortly. Now it was while troops were assembling on the Dorset coast, anticipating a French invasion during the Napoleonic Wars, that Charles's brewery secured a government contract to supply ale to the troops, and it became a success. Well, after Charles died in 1827, his son Robert inherited the business and he ran it on his own for a further 20 years. Then a, a chap called George Edward Woodhouse, known as Edward, came and worked at the brewery and ended up marrying Robert's niece, Hannah. And as a wedding present, Robert took on Edward as a partner in the brewery and the Hall and Woodhouse brewing business was born. Well, Robert and Edward worked together until Robert's death in 1859. Edward and Hannah then took over the house here at Broadclose and lived here until 1915, at which point it became a pub. The previous original Fox Inn that was located further south in the village, and we'll see the location of that later on, had been destroyed in a fire. Well, when Edward died in 1875 at the age of just 54, his sons, George and Alfred, took over the brewery. And it was that year that the Badger image was adopted as the company trademark, making it one of the oldest registered marks on record. Well, during the late 19th century, beer production moved to Blandford Forum. Well, just opposite the pub is the Brewery Farm Shop. I think it's run by the same folk who run the pub. And there's a farm shop and uh, a holiday lodge and uh, camping here. We're just uh, heading south through the village. This building here is the site of the old brewery. The original building dates from 1777, but uh, it was effectively rebuilt in 1948 with just the north walls and part of the west wall of the old building being retained. And it's now the village hall. I'm just seeing the Dorset flag flying in the wind there. And these are the malt house cottages, which I guess must have been the old malt house. What a lovely little cottage. Crumble Cottage. <laughs> Brilliant name. Ah, the road crosses a little stream here. I'll tell you a bit more about the stream later on. But we're looking out for a footpath. Ah, here it is. Now, we're going to be going down there into the countryside, but before we do, we're going to do a little detour further south. Just a couple of things to look at down there. We're just heading towards the main part of Anstey. Now, on the left, I don't think we're going to see anything, but uh, a 1902 map shows there were some old brickworks on the eastern side of the road through the village. Ha ha, now that's what I was looking for. This building here on the corner 
is the site of the Old Fox Inn, which shows on a 1902 map, and it's now called Old Fox Cottages. Okay, well, we're now going to leave uh, Anstey and head out into the countryside, initially uh, following a little footpath in a sort of southeasterly direction on the sort of southern side of a stream called Mash Water. I think Logan's going to enjoy the blackberries today as well. There we go. There. Yep. It's definitely blackberry time. <laughs> the more you're going to let your daddy going to have to pick them for you. Oh, he's heard a squirrel. <laughs> Good boy. Now, hopefully you can see this because this is really quite dark in here, but this little section of stream is called Mash Water, but it's actually the top part of the Devil's Brook, which is a stream of about nine miles long. And the source is just to the north of here at Little Anstey, and it eventually joins the river Piddle at Athelhampton, which then flows out to sea at Wareham and then uh, into Pool Harbour. And it gets called the Devil's Brook on maps about a mile from here. Not to be confused, of course, with the River Divilish that flows north of the other side of Bullborough Hill, which is north of Little Anstey. Well, we've just come across a little bit of open area. Perfect place for some whippet zoomies. Cue the music. Little drink again from the mash water to cool down from those zoomies. It is free flowing, so it looks fairly fresh and nice and cool. <laughs> he is going in deep today. That looks very refreshing. Can we stay here, Dad? Any fish in there? Ooh, fish. Ooh. I better get out of this fish in here. Ah, beautiful summer scene, crop in front of me and the hills in the, the distance. And I can just about hear the combine harvester. It's, uh, yeah, it's just started to work on the field, top right hand corner there. A lovely little wooded section here. I think it's called Raspberry Cops. Not 100% sure. I haven't seen any raspberries, but Logan's seen a few blackberries, so that's keeping him happy. Well, very impressive 
crop of maize in the field here by the path and it's coming along nicely as well. Those uh, cobs won't be far away from harvesting I reckon. <laughs> this looks like a bit of mown lawn doesn't it? So there's a sign here, what's that tell us? Uh, Bingham's Malcolm, oh, it's a private estate apart from the church and churchyard so yeah we just need to stick to the footpath and we should be okay. Well this is Bingham's Malcolm. Now in medieval times there was a small settlement here but now it's just a, a country house and a church. The, the village as such was deserted around about 1400. Now I don't think we're going to be able to see much of the house. Um, that may be part of it in front of me here. Um, I better put a map up to explain <laughs> the area around here because Melcombe Horsey is a parish that contains sort of three settlements. You've got Melcombe Bingham and that's the name of the, the current village which is to the south of Anstey. Um, Higher Melcombe which has got a manor house and that's to the well, west of Melcombe Bingham and then there's um, Bingham's Melcombe which is here basically. <laughs> And I believe, again, I don't think we're going to see too much of it. Well, we can, fair bit. That hedge there, the yew hedge, I'm told, is one of the largest yew hedges in all of Dorset. Yeah, it doesn't look as though we're going to see too much of the house as the footpath circumnavigates it and there's quite a big wall. But the roots of the property go back uh, to the Turberville family in the 11th century until Lucy Turberville married Robert Bingham in the 13th century. It was later inherited by another Robert Bingham in 1554 when it was reconstructed and there were further additions in the late 16th century and well over the centuries since and it was sold by the Bingham family in 1895 and I think they were the Earls of Lucan so that could have been in the time of the, the fourth Earl, I don't know. Of course the family is famous for the seventh Earl of Lucan, that's the, the Lord Lucan who disappeared in 1974 and was declared deceased in 2016. And this is the rather sweet church of St Andrew at Bingham's Malcolm. There's been a church on the site since 1150 but uh, the current stone and flint building dates from the 14th century and it, indeed it was built by the Bingham family and it consists of a nave, chancel, a west tower, a north chapel and south chapel incorporating a porch. The upper stage of the tower and the south chapel were rebuilt in the 15th century and there was a, a restoration and partial rebuilding of the chancel in 1844. And next door to it is the old Sunday school. All right, in we go. Straight in front of us here is the font and then to my left the organ and just behind it there's this uh, magnificent stained glass window and on my right there's the chancel and the altar and that must be the north chapel lovely and cool in here I tell you and then opposite the South Chapel a lovely little church well as I mentioned right next to the church is the the old schoolhouse and there's a plaque up there built in memory of Caroline Satta Dama or Dama Bingham AD MD CCC L11. I'll let you look that up. <laughs> and just to the south of the church, these open fields, this is roughly where the old medieval village used to be before it was deserted. And I can just about make out uh, banks and hollows 
It covers about 10 acres and uh, yeah, you can certainly make out where perhaps some of the houses were. Oh, what an enchanting little <laughs> waterfall or weir. Um, still very much part of the, the marsh stream. Right, we now need to change direction and we're going to start heading in a sort of northeasterly direction, heading towards the next settlement of Hilton. Just stop for a little breather. We've been heading uphill along a track, a real sunken track. I wonder if it was an old drover's route. A lot of it was shaded with its own little micro environment with lots of ferns either side and the roots of trees making quite magical shapes. It really was quite something. Right, onwards and upwards. We're shortly gonna cross over a little road and then continue on to Hilton. A uh, little pit stop just to admire the view. Your typical, as I always say, rolling Dorset landscape on a summer's day. Well, just a little heads up if you're doing this walk after seeing the video, just crossing the road that takes us down to Anstey. You need to look out for <laughs> this footpath. The footpath sign, I think, is behind all that vegetation, but that's definitely the gate. And uh, we need to continue heading northwards. I've just come through a little bit of woodland, I think it's called Little Down Plantation, and this is the outskirts of the little village of Hilton, which uh, it used to be part of the estate of nearby Milton Abbey when it was owned by the Hambro family. But we'll go down and have a little bit of an exploration. Gosh, look at that. Isn't that terrific? With the wisteria growing outside the front door there. It's called uh, the old school and I guess it was once a school, it certainly looks as though it was. And this is the All Saints Church at Hilton. It's got origins in the 12th century, although probably there was a church on the site in Saxon times. And it consists of a nave, north and south aisles of three bays, a chancel with north and south chapels, a west tower, a south porch and a vestry west of the north aisle. The tower and porch date from the 15th century, but most of the rest of the church was largely rebuilt in the 16th century, incorporating material from Milton Abbey nearby. The chancel and vestry were rebuilt in the 19th century. Well, just outside, next to the, the priest's door, just to the right of it, is this little stone ledge. And it's actually uh, uh, a stone doll table sticking out of the, the wall. And then just above it, there's a terrific 17th century sundial. We'll have a little wander inside. And there's the font straight in front of me and the chancel at the other end with a, a splendid stained glass window. And apparently, these uh, oak panels either side of the tower inside a 15th century and originally came from Milton Abbey and they're eight foot high and they're apparently the uh, portraits of the 12 apostles and there's the uh, 
other six apostles on the other side. I'm seeing what that uh, etching is next to the door. GT 1784. And these quite splendid windows on the north wall are said to come from the, the cloisters of Milton Abbey uh, pulpit on the left hand side there. And then just uh, continuing, there's the, the organ as well. Splendid church. There's some quite gorgeous thatched cottages in this village. Hambledon Cottage there. What have we got here? The Monk's House. There's such a character to it, especially on the front. The Long Thatch, appropriately named. Now this lovely white thatch building here uh, shows on a 1902 map as a beer house. It was once known as the Crown Inn. And the building itself dates from the late 17th century, early 18th century. Obviously now a residential building and I see it's up for sale. Another little opportunity just to cool Logan's feet and have a little drink perhaps. Watch out for those dragonflies. Oh, you've got one landing on you. <laughs> You're not sure about them. Not sure if you've seen a dragonfly before. Just, oh, I'll just check, make sure there's no fish in this one either. Oh, what a pretty little place Hilton is. Well worth the detour, I'm sure you'll agree. Okay, well, we're now gonna start heading back towards little Anstey. We've got an uphill bit first through uh, a little copse and then a downhill bit. Well, I tell you, we're getting some terrific views on this last section of the walk, heading along a path through a field downhill back towards Lower Anstey, but uh, some of these landscape views are, I always say, hard to put uh, the picture into words. There's a lovely breeze as well, just cooling us down. Just before we come back into Lower Anstey and, and Alla, I've done a tiny little detour to see this pond. It shows on a current Ordnance Survey map, um, but it doesn't show either on a 1902 map or even a, a 1958 map. So it's relatively recent and it looks as though it's on private land. The, uh, the footpath I'm on just goes very close to it, but I can just about make it out through <laughs> through the, uh, the foliage of that lovely willow tree there. I can see some more hens and some bull rush reeds. Really quite idyllic setting. Oh, just look at these. Alla farmhouses. Originally it was two houses. Uh, the left hand side dates to the 15th century and the right hand side the early 17th century. And then it was extended in both the 18th and 19th centuries and considerably restored around about 1980. Right, the pub can't be far away. Well folks, we've made it back to the Fox Inn at Anstey for a pint of Boondoggle. Definitely not a Hall and Woodhouse pub anymore. Oh lovely. And we've got some cheesy chips on the way. 
Well, folks, we've come to the end of the walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here at the Church of St Andrews at Bingham's Malcolm in glorious sunshine. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.